All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Brian Parsley, who is in lovely Charlotte, North Carolina. How are you doing, Brian? Uh, top of the morning to you. <laughs> Brian's Irish as well. Well, he's not. He's um, South African uh, slash American, right, at this stage? I'm American all the way. Right. Um, okay, so Brian's uh, professional career. So he, you started at the bottom, worked your way up from temporary staffing agencies. You did door-to-door -door selling. And from that, you, uh, you experienced and founded uh, successful startups. And now you are consulting. You help organizations with sales optimization and, and other sales-related and, and leadership-related things. And we talk, what I thought we'd talk about today is, okay, we're at, we're at the... Uh, we're at the beginning of November. A lot of people have, you know, just under two months left of, of selling for this year and desperately trying to close, hit their quota or, or hit those accelerators. Um, so closing is obviously a big issue right now. So Brian, when we were talking beforehand, we were talking about the use of, how the use of storytelling can actually increase your, your probability of closing. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. I, I think that uh, as we go here to the end of the year, there's a couple of things we need to make sure we keep in check. Number one, a lot of times people see the end of the year as a time to start pulling back. Uh, the time, oh, well, people are on holiday. They're not really engaged. You got uh, here in America, Thanksgiving, and then, of course, yep. you have Christmas coming up. And even overseas, you South Africa as an example, mm -hmm. uh, you know, December till mid-January, things just shut down, right? Yep. Um, and I think that's a mistake. If you want to have a strong first quarter, you need to end and at least have the momentum going into that fourth quarter. So that's one thing I just want to throw out there. Yeah. This is time to push harder than you've ever pushed ever in your life. Um, the second thing, when you talk about people are looking to close, we can talk about closing in a moment. But storytelling in general isn't necessarily a fast close concept. Mm -hmm. um, I, what, what I know from experience has been this. Our goal as sales professionals is not really to sell. Uh, our goal is twofold. Number one, uh, to connect. I want to be a connector. I want to look for ways and opportunities to say, oh gosh, uh, this guy is an insurance agent, maybe he needs a realtor. This guy is a doctor, maybe he needs an insurance agent. So I'm constantly pivoting my, my contacts to make introductions to people. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they do business together is one thing, but I want to be known as the guy that puts them all together, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. That's why networking events, networking, not net drinking, people go there and, 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 and they tend to hang out with other people like them, but, but there are great opportunities to meet folks just by going out there and trying to connect with other people. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is, what's your biggest goal in sales? Well, you might want to jot this down. You ready, John? Yep. Your goal is to manipulate other people. That's what you're supposed to do as a salesperson, to manipulate. But there's a little back into that before you start throwing tomatoes at me. <laughs> It's manipulate with good intent. Right. And the best way to describe that is if you're a parent, you manipulate your children with good intent to guide them to the decisions that you believe and know in your heart are the most important things for them to keep them safe, healthy, and smart as they grow older. Right. Yeah. So if we keep that in mind here as we go forward, um, you know, I think it'll make a lot more sense when we talk about storytelling. Is that yeah. right? No, that's that's great. Because uh, one of the things um, we uh, I used, we used to use in, in in another role I was in with another company is one of the rules of communication is that you know people believe conclusions they come to by themselves and anything you or I can say to them, right? So part of your job is to guide them to come to those conclusions. And as you said, if you manipulate with good intent or you guide somebody to a conclusion with good intent because you know this is going to help them, then that's that's a good thing to do. A hundred percent, and you're dead on. So let's talk about storytelling. Um, mm -hmm. Here's the fact. The fact is, facts are forgotten. Facts are forgotten, stories are retold. And when you load down the, um, when you load down the prospect or your customer with facts, figures, values, and, and the features and benefits and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, people are going to forget it. They don't, you know why? Because they really don't care. The bottom, right. This is why infomercials are so powerful. Mm -hmm. Infomercials do nothing but tell a story. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you cut a tomato and it crushes? In your mind, you go, I've never crushed a tomato all the way down on the table. But you start watching it and go, that could happen. Yeah, and I want that. Yeah, <laughs> i got to have it because they're establishing a pain through a story. Mm -hmm. You live the story vicariously. And they don't talk about the price. 
they just tell you the story and then you want it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I also believe that by telling stories, it helps people relate. Now, actually, I take it back. Before I tell you the story part, I want to share with you an example. And this is a real example that happened for me. How do you connect with people? Well, one way to do, and this is going into your answer to the question about November, end of yep. the year, closing things. You have to make sure that you're connecting with people. Um, and there's pre-call preparation is a big thing that a lot of people need to get better at. Mm -hmm. uh, what I call rapport investigation. Before you go meet with your clients, you want to connect with them. Part of the storytelling is connecting, right? So I want to find ways that we can connect together. So how do you do rapport investigation or internet stalking, as it's known? <laughs> so we, we, of course, have LinkedIn and Facebook and things like that. And, and certainly, I would never say to you that I'm looking up your Facebook right now, John, and go, oh, my goodness. He loves, uh, he loves Italian food. Hey, John, I like Italian food. Do you? <laughs> That's creepy. Yeah, okay? yeah. yeah for but, sure. but if I do see, like as an example, I'm a Freemason. And if I saw on your page that you're part of a Freemason group, you know, or a club, then, then uh, well, we call them lodges. But you yeah. know, if you're part of that, then I would look at it and go, maybe I throw out a sign or symbol or something. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait. Yeah. Hey, It'd be pretty funny. hard to do the funny handshake, though, through virtual. Yeah, yeah have, <laughs> we, have, we have all kinds. And, and so then, um, but I'll give you an example. So I was with a financial advisor, and we were uh, going on a call to a lady, and this is something I'm doing a road kind of show with these folks. And she's like, well, I'm meeting this lady. It's the third time. She's not friendly. She sees me, I think, out of obligation. She, I can't seem to close her, and I don't know what it is. I've done everything. And it's like, well, Let's look her up on Facebook. And sure enough, it was locked down. I couldn't see anything. But I said, click the about likes. And we looked at her likes, and they were all kinds of cool things like, uh, I think it was Chihuahua this and Chihuahua Rescue and all that. And she goes, wow, that's weird. And I go, why? She goes, I have a Chihuahua. Uh -huh. I go, yeah, she, I do. And I said, <laughs> what you got to do is take a picture of your Chihuahua, put it on your desktop, right? And when we go, before we get started, just open it up. See, this is the manipulation with good intent. <laughs> yeah. We show up. Sure enough, she opens it up, and the lady goes, what is that Chihuahua? She goes, yes, that's my Chihuahua. Now, you wouldn't want to do this if you didn't have a Chihuahua. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay? That's manipulation with bad intent. Yeah, but yeah. she goes, uh, I have a Chihuahua. She goes, are you serious? No, I am serious. <laughs> Next thing you know, they're best friends. They created this rapport, and they were able to push through and they use the chihuahua as the common denominator or the story or the vessel to get to where they need to be. And the so, nice, and so I just gonna say, and the nice thing about that, Brian, is that that has, that has taken some of the tension and maybe the wall away. So now you can have a real conversation. It doesn't mean that you're gonna to sell to them or close them just because you have the chihuahua, but you've created the best environment. I, I will tell you this. I always say that uh, you can act professional, but you got to talk friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, like people, people can see through the, I have a 13 year old and I was just telling her the other day, I said, her name's Alexis. And I said, Alex, you have to be careful the way you come across. I know your heart. I know your intent, but sometimes you come across as unauthentic. Hey, how are you? <laughs> and, and I know you're trying to be polite, but it comes across fake. And mm -hmm. sales professionals, I see it every day, do the same thing. Not intentionally. It's not their intent. But it's what people see. You have to remember that, you know, uh, you know, 50, 50, I think it's 54% of communication is nonverbal or 53% nonverbal. And another 38% is how you say it. Yep. So the vast majority of our communication aren't even the words. That's why stories are so powerful. Now, there's five parts to any story. And this is right. what's cool about it. It's really easy. Once upon a time, there was the hero. The hero went on a journey, right? And on the journey, they met a challenge. That could be a dragon. It could be a sure. terrorist. It could be whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Then the hero somehow, some way, figured out a way to slay that dragon. And then they lived happily ever after. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, a hero went on a journey, met a challenge, you know, uh, solved the challenge, and then happily ever after. Mm -hmm. So those are the five parts to a story. Every movie's like that. Every fairy tale's like that. And, so, every sailor, and every sailor's like that. Well, here's why. Once upon a time, we had a customer very similar to you. Mm -hmm. They were looking to achieve this output, X, Y, Z. And this is the challenge that they faced. This right. is what we did for them. And now they live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you create stories around objections. Your cost is too high. We had a bad experience in the past. 
Uh, I only use this other competitor. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a need right now. So let's say uh, we used you in the past and uh, five years ago and, and, and we had a bad experience. You know, I totally understand. In fact, I have a customer very similar to you that we're looking to, you know, build, what, I don't know what we're selling, but sure. we're looking to achieve X. And they had a challenge. The challenge was we dropped the ball. The challenge was our company failed them. But then I did a little bit of research and I figured out it wasn't the company, it was that account executive. And this is where they dropped the ball and this is what we did for them. And not only do they love what we put into play, but now they're our loyal customer because they know that not only am I responsible, but I'm accountable for everything that happens within this organization. And then, so I'm basically saying that won't happen to you, but through the, 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 the story, they're in their mind, you know, envisioning this so that they're going to say, oh, well, that makes, and it's automatic proof. Yeah. And, and, and you're not, and you're not trying to deny that there were issues in the past, right? I mean, you're, as you Correct. said, you're, you're explaining how you learned from those how you overcome them and how you'll ensure that they never happen again. And when you said about, you were just saying about the authenticity, that's more authentic, isn't it? Than saying like, oh, well, no, you know, we, we've never had issues like that or, or that absolutely one. It's much more yeah. authentic to say, yeah, we had those kind of issues and here's what we did to solve it. I, you know, I get more frustrated when I have a problem somewhere and they want to give me the reasons why I'm wrong when I'm a customer Yeah. And, or, or the excuse. It's not it. Just apologize and move on mm -hmm. and take responsibility. And, you know, I always love this. I, I say I, I'd rather take, and I work with companies, you know, helping them, you know, create more loyal customers. So one of the biggest challenges is they ignore or they try to avoid upset customers. And my, my, I would postulate I would take a, a, a very upset customer over an okay customer. Mm -hmm. Because I can take an upset customer and turn them into someone loyal way quicker than a transactional customer. Right. And the best way to diffuse it is to obviously agree with them. Now, I've used, I'll use two different examples, but, but they both come down to the, to the end. Um, where I had a lady, uh, it was got escalated up to me, and they said, can you please deal with her? She cusses and screams. And, and I was like, hey, my name is Brian, and so-and-so asked me to give you a call. And then she let into it. And I'm talking about, I don't think she took a breath. <laughs> for three minutes straight, just man, man, man. Every I learned new words. Like I didn't, even, <laughs> and and I didn't say a word. In fact, I didn't even acknowledge that I was listening. Mm -hmm. I didn't say mm -hmm, or anything. Just quiet. And at the end, I was quiet even after she stopped. And then she thought I hung up. She's like, "Hello." I was like, "No, I'm here." And she's like, "Well, what do you have to say about that?" And I said, "I'm silent because I have nothing to say." <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm, I can't believe you're not more upset than you are. Now, when you say that to someone and it comes across something, where they say, how dare you agree with me? Yeah. <laughs> I said, I can't believe you're not more upset than you are. Because if it were me, I wouldn't even have this phone call. Mm -hmm. I would just move on. Right. But the fact that you are taking this phone call shows me that you care. You care enough that you want to make sure that you let us know. And even though I may not be able to save you as a customer, I never want this to happen to anyone else. In fact, to tell you that this happened one out of 10,000 times is irrelevant because you're the one and it's 100% of you. And I get that. She's, and, and then typically what happens when you do that, um, not only do you, are you telling the story by you know, re-anchoring yeah. what you're saying, uh, but, but typically they'll then back off and say, well, well, what do you think we should do? And, and, and the goal, obviously, is to manipulate them back in good, with good intent mm -hmm. to, to be your customer. And I'll, and I'll share with you the seventh part of the story is this. Have you ever gone to a restaurant or a store and you had such bad service, such a bad experience that you swore you would never go there again? Oh, yeah, too many times. times. But is it plausible that no one else in that organization subscribes to that same belief that that person created for you? Meaning... That one-off experience could be that individual. Yeah. And yet we're judging the whole company. That's yeah. why it's so incredibly important every interaction that you have with the customer, every time. Good, bad, or bad. In fact, the ones that are paying the butt still give food. On, that's how we should answer our phones. Uh, good afternoon, thanks for the food, because they're putting <laughs> food on their table. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And it's, and it's interesting because, um, as you said, there is, you know, if people are upset, if customer, you know, if we'll – take ourselves right if we're upset with an experience what is the one thing that we really want we want to we want to be acknowledged and we want to be heard 
right? That's what we want. And when people fail to do that, um, it just makes you more angry. And then you just go away and you say, forget it. But if they acknowledge it and they listen to you, then they, there's a chance of rehabilitation. And not just that, as we know, I, well, let me ask you about that particular t- particular customer. Did they remain a customer and they one of your loyal, more loyal stones? Well, it wasn't customers? my, it wasn't oh, my okay. but it was one of the client's businesses. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm almost, I call myself the press secretary or the crisis control guy. So when they have an escalated issue, right. um, this was a pretty substantial mm-hmm. uh, account. Um, a lot of times my clients will call me in to, to try to, you know, be the peacekeeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but again, you, you nailed it. Uh, feeling like you're heard, feeling valued, appreciated. Appreciation is a, is a currency that's accepted around the world. Mm-hmm. And, and it's so easy to give, and yet we, we don't really share it very often. Because yeah. uh, I, I just, uh, just as an aside on this, because I had an experience recently where I had to follow, this was my honor to follow up on something that I, that I thought was wrong, and I was really annoyed about it, and I called up, and the guy who dealt with it walk me he was really calm very friendly very empathetic walk me through it and then showed me actually at the end that it actually was my fault right it wasn't their fault <laughs> actually my fault but the way he did it in the end i was like oh my goodness you're correct i'm really sorry it's actually my fault and i was and i had started off pretty angry and i'd actually um you know maybe been a little less pleasant and i had to say listen i'm really sorry for snapping at you at the beginning i didn't understand it i thought i, uh, I thought you guys were in the wrong it was actually me and after that, I said, what's your name? He gave me his name, and I went immediately and um, sent a message to his... Um, his the, guilt, the guilt message. And by the, the way, I put my glasses yeah. so I could fuck you. Yes, exactly. Snap. Yeah. So, I mean, I sent the message because I was like, oh, my goodness, this guy handled that brilliantly. He handled it fantastically. Yeah. But, but those are far and few between, typically, whether they're right or wrong. Uh, and by the way, let's say they are right. How do we react and respond to customers? Even if I know you're wrong, I have mm-hmm. to give you grace. Yes. You know, I have to say, I totally understand how you feel. And, and I would probably feel the same way if I saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, quite honestly, uh, let me walk you through the process and then let's reevaluate where we are. Because mm-hmm. I, want, I want you to be a customer. I really do. Um, and, and so I, I, I think that if you're dealing with people, here's the other thing as a self-professional. If you're going to start a relationship with a new customer, here would be my advice. You tell them, I want you to know, John, right up front, that I will let you down at some point. <laughs> and and, and I'm, that's not my hope. It's not my desire. But I'm a human. And by me, it could be the business. It could be the deliverables. But I will let you down. The difference is, is that you will have my mobile number. You can call me 24-7. And I'm going to solve your problem. And I'm going to take accountability as well as responsibility. <clears throat> when something happens because that's the difference because everybody tries to be like, we're better than them. Like, no. We're all the same. <laughs> You're not that special. Yeah. And, and so um, <laughs> tell me a little bit about how, so as you said earlier, so we're in the situation towards the end of the year, people are, you know, they're getting ready for vacations or they're in parts of the world. Like, you know, it's Ireland's the same as like South African that, you know, you won't get anything after mid December, right? People right. are just switched off. So if you're, if you're selling and it's Thanksgiving or whatever, and people are, are your prospects are going, uh, yeah, well, you know, let's just pick this up in the new year. You know, what are some of the ways you can help to make it more urgent that they address the issue this year and they kind of give you a little space? Well, ironically, uh, well, first off, let me say, it's wonderful that people disengage in the end of November all the way through the end of December because that means they're not getting hounded by every other salesperson that's given up. Yeah. Right? So you have actually a better window to actually talk to people because mm-hmm. if they're a decision maker, chances are they work. You know what time I call CEOs? Uh, in the morning before uh, 8 and then in the evening after 8. That's when I reach out. And I, I coach a CEO of a publicly traded company. And uh, he actually just sent me a text before our call and said, let's talk tonight at 8.30. Friday yeah. night at 8.30, that's mm-hmm. when I got to talk to him. Right? And, and, and you have to be – and any salesperson that tells me, Oh, no, after five is my time. That's cool. Enjoy being broke. But, <laughs> but because this, this is a, we're in a different time now. Yeah. It is a connected world and you have to be available. Now, you can hate me for that, but, but that's the truth. And, that's and, the truth. and yeah. um, so the answer to your question, how do you do that? Well, number one, ask. You know, and if you're from overseas, ask. 
So <laughs> it just kind of depends on, on where you are. But but I'm I'm gonna call you until I get a restraining order. Yeah. And, and I'm going to constantly follow up. And one of the things that I recommend, even in an email or voicemail, I say, uh, John, I tried to reach you, couldn't get you. Um, I know you're busy. If I don't hear back from you, I assume you want me to follow up next Monday. <laughs> and, and literally, and I can show you, I had a guy for 14 months that I have uh, uh, did that with, and he finally got back with me, and he said, I, first, I want you to know, thank you. I appreciate your due diligence. Uh, second of all, he said, it wasn't you. It really was me. And this is what was going on. And I'm ready to, to meet. And that's important. I have, um, I'll give you one more here, John. I'm going to pull up my, my yeah. phone here. I just want to show you something here. I want to be careful you don't see his name. But um, this is a CEO of, uh, that I'm retained by mm -hmm. that is, uh, that you can see the blues, I yeah. think, anyway, right? Uh, but you can Hopefully you can. But yeah, I can. Are all the, the last time he's texted me back, here it is, was August 26th. Wow. Was the last time that he texted me back. But I text him, try to reach out. Here's the update. And he pays me every month. <laughs> and, and I haven't spoken to him since August. But I can, I, it's my responsibility as a salesperson to add value, to give, to follow up, and to do it. Not to say, well, it's busy, it's the end of the year. You need to call your clients and set it up. Give them that sense of urgency. And, and do it with great. You can't go in there and be bossy. You mm -hmm. have to be subservient. We are butt kissers. That's <laughs> what sales people are. And if you can't do it, don't do it. Yeah. Can't do the time, don't do the crime. <laughs> don't be a salesperson. It's so funny. It is. Yeah, it's so funny what you just said there about uh, if you don't answer this, I presume you want me to follow up next. Because I get these all the time where I get like three in a row and the third one is, seeing as you haven't answered my last two emails, this is the last, I'm not going to bother you anymore. And I'm like, great, thanks. Um, but it's completely the opposite approach, right? When I have, when I have, a, when I have a telemarketer, I say, look, don't be discouraged. Call other people. Right. And if they suck, they go, okay, and they hang up. <laughs> I want to hear the pitch. Yeah, I want to be able to see. I was actually in, gosh, where were we? We were in Charleston, South Carolina two weeks ago. Oh, lovely. These lovely. guys, there were these Israeli guys, and this is going to blow your mind. This is the best, I, I want to say shtick, but it's like the sales process I've ever seen. They have, a, they have this young lady that's out on the street with a little pug dressed up, and she's in a princess <laughs> outfit, handing out samples of soap and they were selling like uh soap like handmade soap yeah. or whatever and they had a thing she goes would you like a free sample of soap so my daughter's like oh i'd love to have some soap she goes oh that's awesome she goes we make them in house and that's what it is she goes and that might get greasy on your hand why don't you come in and we'll we'll wrap it in a nice little box you can take back to the hotel so now at this point even me i'm like well, that's really nice <laughs> And these Israeli guys come over and like, hey, how you doing? They started showing me like the skincare stuff and everything, which by the way, was $750 after their special <laughs> discount. It's going to make me look really young and beautiful and grow hair and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's working, obviously. And, and I'm sitting there <laughs> like going, wow, that is really cool. And, and I'm like, wait a minute. How did I go from a, 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 a pug and a princess giving me a free sample of soap to looking at a seven hundred dollar purchase, <laughs> these these guys. I said, "Where are you from?" He goes, "Israel." I'm like, "You're the most brilliant sales guy I've ever seen." And he kind of smiled, and he's like, "I know." <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was their whole idea, and, but they don't take no for the answer. And if you're willing to push through and have that confidence, and people, why do I want to meet? With you? I don't want to meet with you if you're going to pitch me. Mm -hmm. You want to give me value. You want to connect me. You want to do things that are going to help my business. Call me up. Let's meet. Yeah. And by the way, I love, cause we're bumping up against the end here, but I love that idea of um, the fact is that, yeah, there's probably all around the world and certainly all around the States there's probably salespeople who are giving up saying, Oh, I'm never going to get through to Brian at this stage, you know, Thanksgiving is coming up or whatever. And the, the one piece of advice is to those motivated people um, listening or watching is yeah, they're clearing the field for you. If you keep, you keep trying to talk to, you keep trying to get to Brian because of all these other people who've quit, you know, guess what? You've just got a far better chance of being heard. Yeah. And by the way, it was probably four or five emails uh, before I even responded to, uh, to your person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We're pretty persistent. You know why? Because in my mind, I'm like, 
it's a scam. It's <laughs> trying to get your information. You know? yeah. Give me your social security number. Yeah. Well, have you, did you check your bank account since we started talking? <laughs> that brings back, uh, that's like post traumatic stress for me. <laughs> So listen, Brian, this has been great. Uh, thank you for the insight. Before we go, uh, if you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do, that'd be great. Well, I'm probably the worst at being able to promote myself, but I will say this, brianparsley.com, which is my website, uh, you can subscribe and I send out a free video every week. Uh, just usually they're a couple minutes long, ideas, best practices, all based around sales and customer service. Excellent. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. Brian, this has been fantastic. Hopefully you'll come back and we'll talk again soon. Love the conversation and see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.